Off the coast of Algeria, along the Mediterranean Sea, lies a royal mausoleum. This mausoleum is called the Tomb of the Christian Woman by locals. And this is because on the doors there appears to be a cross. However, this tomb cannot be a tomb of a Christian woman because it was constructed before Jesus Christ was even born. But before we go any further, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button and give us a like. Also, again, a shout out to our awesome producer, Tiffany, who is a Reiki master and teacher. If you would like to talk to Tiffany and perhaps get into some alternative healing, her email address is listed down below. Also, thank you so much to all of our Patreons. Because of you, you make my job our job so much easier on this channel. If you would like to help support the channel, you can join our Patreon by following the link listed down below. All right, let's get started. Welcome to Esoteric Atlanta. My name is Bryce, and today we're going to be talking about Cleopatra's daughter. never really been someone that's been super interested in Egyptian history. Yes, according to my 23 and me, I do have a little bit of Egyptian in me. However, I am mostly European. But on David Zublik's channel on his own platform, The Dark Outpost TV, as most of you know, we are going to be breaking down the Roman Empire, the Council of Nicaea, and the um, con that Constantine pulled to change the modern day Christian faith. Now, of course, studying all this led me down to Egypt and a lot of the battles that happened between the Roman Empire and the Egyptian kingdom, which of course led me to the Ptolemies, which of course led me to Cleopatra. If you watched our video that we released on Wednesday, you know that I broke down Cleopatra's somewhat scandalous life. Of course, we can't find her tomb, so some of the scandals and legends that are spoken about can't really be proven until we can exhume her body. Well, upon studying Cleopatra, as you know from our video on Wednesday, we did talk about her son with Julius Caesar, whom she named Ptolemy the 15th Caesar. And if you haven't seen that video, if for some reason you're just now stumbling upon this channel, I will link the video down below so you can go ahead and watch that before we get deeper into this next story. Well, this next story is going to involve Cleopatra's other children, children that she had with Mark Antony, and one child in particular, her daughter, her only daughter, Cleopatra Selene II. Cleopatra Selene II was born in 40 BC. In fact, she was a twin. Her brother's name was Alexander Helios. Now, Cleopatra Selene, Selene was supposed to represent the moon, and Alexander Helios, well, Helios was supposed to represent the sun. Cleopatra Selene and Alexander Helios were not the only two children of Cleopatra and Mark Antony. Four years later, in 36 BC, they had another son they named Ptolemy Philadelphios. Now, if you can remember back from our video on Wednesday that we have linked below, if you can't remember back or haven't watched it yet, Octavian and Mark Antony were both generals in the Roman Empire. Mark Antony was in charge of the eastern side of the Roman Empire, where Octavia was in charge of the western side of the Roman Empire. Now, when Mark Antony fell in love with Cleopatra, as I said in the last video, it was a little bit like sleeping with the enemy. Octavia was pissed. It was He saw Mark Antony as selling out the Roman Empire to a foreign country. But of course, the scandal is even deeper than just that. Mark Antony, it does appear, was Octavian's brother-in-law. Yes, Octavian's sister, Octavia the Minor, was Mark Antony's wife. So much scandal. 
Well, Mark Antony obviously did divorce Octavia. Yes, they had divorces back then in order to marry Cleopatra and proceeded to have children with Cleopatra while leaving his other children behind in the Roman Empire. Now, as far as Cleopatra's oldest son, Ptolemy XV Caesar, who was Cleopatra's co-ruler, if you can remember from Wednesday's video, he was perceived to be almost a demigod or a god. You know, he was the son of Julius Caesar, as well as heir to the Ptolemaic reign. And Octavian, not only being Mark Antony's brother-in-law, the brother of Mark Antony's scorned first wife, Octavia the Minor, was also the great nephew of Julius Caesar. This shit's all in the family, guys. So not only does Octavian see Mark Antony's actions is treason-esque, but he's also super petrified of Ptolemy the XV, this teenage child who was the love child of his great uncle and Cleopatra and is being adored as a god because he is both the Roman Empire and the Egyptian Empire. But then to make matters worse, as if they could get worse, in 34 BC, Cleopatra and Mark Antony proceed to have what was called the Donations of Alexandria. Here, they proceeded to give their their three children together. Again, um, Cleopatra, Selena II, and her twin brother, Alexander Helios, and their young two-year-old son, Ptolemy Philadelphios, land. They bequeath land to these three children that they will eventually one day rule. The only problem is the land that they bequeath to their three other children, because you know, Ptolemy the 15th, the oldest child with Caesar is the demigod that will be ruling Egypt. Well, the other three, this other land, it wasn't their land to give. It was Roman land that they gave their children. So then Octavian was like, oh, hell no. And that's when the Battle of Actum happened, as we talked about in our previous video, and e Egypt fell, and Cleopatra and Mark Antony both died, whether by suicide or, or murder. Again, that's still not clear because we haven't found their bodies. Now, again, if you can remember, Ptolemy XV was killed by Octavian. Well, what happened to the other three children? Well, this is where the story gets even more interesting. When Egypt fell to Octavian, it became a province of the Roman Empire, which we'll get more into next week. But because Egypt was now not its own kingdom anymore, these children who were princesses and princes were now captives of the Roman Empire. No, the same fate did not befall them that befell their older brother. Instead, they were brought back up to Rome. Now, there's no doubt in my mind that Octavian probably wanted to kill them. And in fact, that might have happened to the two other brothers, which we'll get into later on. But it seems that the people of the Roman Empire all still kind of liked Mark Antony. He was the fun-loving general, the partier. And they did not want to see his children all murdered. This, my friends, was a PR stunt by Octavian. We know that the people of the Roman Empire had a lot of empathy and compassion for these children because of one particular event. After Octavian got back to Rome with the three other children of Cleopatra and Mark Antony, he paraded them down the street. Now, what he did in this parade was definitely, in my opinion, crimes against humanity, crimes against children. He dressed Cleopatra Selina II up like a moon. After all, that's what her name meant. He dressed her brother, her twin brother, Alexander Helios, into a costume that represented the sun, because again, that's what his name meant. He chained them up in these gold chains and made them march behind a statue of their dead mother. 
they say that the chains were so heavy that the children had a really hard time moving. Well, of course, the Roman people watching this were very upset to see these poor children going through this abuse. So Octavian then knew he had to watch it. If he was gonna maintain control over the Roman Empire now, he was gonna have to be on his best behavior with these children. So he sent the children to be under the guardianship of Mark Antony's first wife, Octavian's sister, Octavia the Minor. Now at this point, the children are able to live with their other half brothers and sisters, half brothers and sisters from their father that they didn't really know before. Now, for all intent and purposes, it does appear that the children had a pretty good childhood with Octavia. She's a very far greater woman than many other women to be able to take in her ex-husband's lovers turned wife children upon their death and raise them. That's, that's a pretty good woman. The only interesting thing to note, as we referenced earlier, is that around 25 BC, we stop seeing records of Alexander Helios and Ptolemy Philadelphios. We don't know if these two boys died of an illness or if they were quietly assassinated like their older brother. Many historians from what I read believe that they were probably assassinated. You see, Octavian was worried that as these boys got older, they would strike up a rebellion against Octavian for the death of their parents. And since they were of royal pedigree, many historians believe that they, if they had died of a sickness, it would have been recorded. So the fact that we don't have any type of mention of their death leaves a lot of people to believe that they were quietly assassinated. So by 25 BC, the only child left from Mark Antony and Cleopatra was Cleopatra Selene II. Octavian had Cleopatra Selene II married to Juba II. Juba II, in a lot of ways, was like Cleopatra Selene II. Juba II's father, Juba I, had been the king of Numibia. Numibia is up near modern-day Libya very close to the kingdom of Egypt. It's also important to note, if you are following along with our series on the Dark Outpost TV, that this is, or was, Canaanite land. And of course, the Canaanite lands of Carthage fell to the Roman Empire a few years before. Juba II's father, Juba I, the king of Numibia, was defeated by Julius Caesar as well in the year 46 BC. At this point, Numibia became, again, another province of the Roman Empire. So that meant that Juba I, a lot like Cleopatra and Mark Antony's children, became almost like a ward of the state to the Roman Empire. However, because these children were of royal pedigree, they were given a a different childhood than maybe other prisoners of war or wards of the state would receive. In fact, Juba II was considered to be a scholar. He was also an author. Plutarch, the historian, the Greek historian that wrote a lot about Cleopatra and the Roman Empire during this time, said that Juba II was one of the most well-educated people of his time. Because Juba II was raised by Julius Caesar, he knew Octavian pretty well, kind of grew up with him. And so Juba II was present at the Battle of Actum. He fought alongside Octavian to defeat Mark Antony. Well, around 25 BC, when Cleopatra Selene II was of age, Octavian arranged for Juba II to marry Cleopatra Selene II. Now it does seem that Juba and Cleopatra Selene had a fairly good relationship. They did seem to really love and respect each other. But how weird is that to be married to a man that helped destroy your family and your family's kingdom? Well, around this time, Octavian restored Juba II 
back to Numibia, where he became the queen of Numibia alongside Cleopatra Selina II, who is now the queen of Numibia. How weird, like you grew up in Egypt, which is right next door, basically. And then this Octavian dude comes in and like wrecks your family. You're just a child. Your parents die when you're about 10 years old. Then you're taken as a prisoner of war up to the Roman Empire where you're paraded through the streets and then you're raised by your dad's ex-wife and your half brothers and sisters that you didn't really know that well. But then you're arranged to get married to a man who was also a prisoner of war from a neighboring kingdom, except he actually fought beside the person, the family that was keeping you guys captive to destroy your family. And now you're back in the continent of Africa, right beside Egypt, your home land, and you're ruling this area that you might have gotten to rule anyway if um, the donations your parents had given you worked out, if that makes sense. Over time, the kingdom was expanded to include what is now modern day Algeria. So this became known as the land of Mauritania. And so Queen Cleopatra Selene II was the queen of Mauritania. And this is where the mausoleum lies. It is believed that this mausoleum that sits on the coast of modern day Algeria is the final resting place or was the final resting place of Cleopatra, Selene, and her husband, Juba II. Now I say it was the final resting place because it is believed that their bodies are no longer there. There's a possibility that their bodies were taken from grave robbers. A long time ago. Now it is also believed that this tomb was supposed to be the tomb for their dynasty. Now Cleopatra Selene II and her husband Juba II did have at least one son that we know of. They also supposedly had a daughter but we don't really know who she was. Now their kingdom did fall again it didn't stay their kingdom for very long. All good things must eventually come to an end. We know that even though Queen Cleopatra VII, Cleopatra Selene II's mother, has been given the reputation of being a bit of a Jezebel, scandalous woman in our history books, we know that she was a good ruler for the most part for the Egyptian people. She was the first Ptolemaic ruler to learn the Egyptian language. And we know that she fought for Egypt's sovereignty against the Roman Empire, even though at times she had to use the Roman Empire for her own survival. It is believed that Juba II and Cleopatra's daughter, Cleopatra Selene II, were also very good rulers for the area in which they ruled. But as time beats on, empires do fall. And the Roman Empire itself would very historically fall in the late 400s, where we know the world would then enter into a dark age, where the Roman Catholic Church would become the ruling fist of Europe. And then over time, that power would transfer to different kingdoms and eventually make its way over to the Americas, where the United States itself has been described as the new Roman Empire. And as we look at historical figures and scandalous stories, weird fringe topics, we start to notice that time marches on. The fate of our ancestors can at times be our own fate as well. But hopefully as we reach a dawn of a new age, the age of Aquarius, some things will shift and change. All right, guys, thank you so much for sitting through that story. I found the Ptolemaic family to be such an interesting family full of intrigue 
espionage and scandal. I really appreciate you joining me for this ride. Um, again, if you are not joining us every Tuesday on the Dark Outpost TV, please come over and join us where David Zublik and I get to go through some of these um, historical events that might not be as we've been taught. We are going to go into the Council of Nicaea next week along with Constantine. I am going to be talking a little bit about Constantine in our, on this channel next week as well, just to catch some of you up who are not on the Dark Outpost TV. And then I've got some other stories up my sleeve involving the Roman Empire and Alexandria and some other stuff that happened in this area of the world that has definitely been part of what has led us to where we are today. All right, friends, as always, leave your comments below for me. Were you familiar with Cleopatra Selene? I couldn't find a whole, whole lot on her. It was just that basic story that I found. There have been some um, historical fiction writers, though, that have written a lot of novels based around Cleopatra's only daughter and only surviving child. So um, I will provide some links to those books as well if you would like to read their accounts of, of this mystery mysterious young girl. And as always, thank you so much to our good friend Josh McKay for writing the music. That is our opening song. If you would like to purchase the full song, that is our opening song. You can follow the link below to do that. Again, thank you to Todd Roderick for helping me edit and produce this story. You guys have no idea how much Todd has to do for me because I'm a little bit stupid when it comes to computers. So he does a lot to help me get this out to you. So thank you, thank you, thank you, Todd. Um, if you would like to follow Todd's band, uh, the Flying Mystics. Again, there's a link below to his band. Go and give them a follow. Um, they're putting most of their stuff on YouTube now because of the whole situation this year. They haven't really been able to tour. So you get front row access to all of their music if you subscribe to their channel below. All right, guys, I guess I will see you guys again on Monday with our Mystery Monday, and I will talk to you then. Bye.